This video is brought to you by John Robson Guitar Tuition. If you enjoy the content, please consider supporting the channel by enrolling on a course, purchasing some guitar lessons or a t-shirt, or you can join my Patreon. Now, on with the show. Hello chaps, welcome once again to John Robson Guitar Tuition. As always, I do hope you're well. Uh, what you just saw and heard there was me having a go at the uh, solo from the absolutely iconic 1960 British rock and roll hit uh, Shaken All Over by Johnny Kidd and the Pirates. For many years I assumed that that solo was played by the legendary Mick Green. Um, turns out I was wrong. He was the guitarist in Johnny Kidd and the Pirates but he didn't join until 1962. That solo was actually played by someone called Joe Moretti. And it's, uh, well the, that solo and that song really are, uh, well they played a big part in teaching me how to figure out where notes were on the fretboard and we'll talk all about that um, once we've discussed like the nuts and bolts and bits and pieces that are actually going on in the solo here it is solo explanation okay then as always we shall begin by looking at the chord sequence the solo is played over uh, there it is there and well you'll notice that I've said it, it's implied by the bass and uh, guitar solo note choice there aren't any chords under the solo on the original recording I put some in on my version just to give you something to play over when you're playing over the backing track um, but um, yeah it's basically E minor a blues in E minor you can see you've got the 1, 4 and 5 chords there E minor, A minor um, if we were sticking strictly to a minor blues, you'd have B minor and A minor in the, on that last line there. But the note choice uh, that uh, that happens in the guitar solo, basically we have a D sharp note, which tends to imply a B7 rather than um, a B minor. And we also have a C sharp note, uh, which tends to imply A7 rather than A minor. So... That's what's going on in uh, the accompaniment, and uh, let's have a look at the solo. We begin with four bars, over that first four bars of E minor, with um, kind of a unison lick. What we're doing is we're sliding up to the fifth fret on the B string, to that uh, E note there, and bouncing off the, uh, the open top E string, so you're getting that kind of thing going on repeatedly. And there's a little bit of fun to be had here, uh, messing around with the rhythm of that. Let me see if I can get the, the actual rhythm on the track. Um, it took me a few goes when I was recording the solo, but it goes something like this. There we go, that's it. You can hear it's kind of not just one and two and three and four, and there's a little bit of rhythmic displacement going on. Um, I would definitely file that under um, things that are just a snapshot of how the solo was played on the day. Uh, I suspect if you go and dig out live versions of the solo, uh, then you will find that there's many, very, many variations on that. So just kind of go for that sort of, almost like a Chuck Berry kind of thing. Something like that, and you, you'll be uh, pretty close. At that point, uh, we ascend up to the four chord, the A minor, and we play this lick. Um, like that, just coming out of like an A minor chord shape. There we go. Um, so just bringing the, the, I guess you could call it an E minor pentatonic. See how that's coming out of the pattern three of an E minor pentaton, and a similar thing in the next bar where we uh, we actually bring in the F sharp uh, here for this. Uh, there we go. So bending that F sharp up to a G, and then back to this kind of more open string thing again. Uh, 
like that. Um, then we're on to the, uh, the the last four bars where, as I said, we're kind of encountering that B7 to A7 kind of thing. Um, why I say that it's more of a B7 is because, as you see, we'll get... That's the lick there. He starts with just uh, clipping an open uh, fourth string at D, but as we go into the lick, we get... There's the D sharp. And then we come down, again, clipping that open D string. So you can see definitely that is actually um, an A7 arpeggio. As I say, A7 arpeggio. I'm just looking at the tab over there, by the way. And then after that, we're back to that sort of Chuck Berry unison thing again. That kind of thing. And then we finish with um, this kind of palm, well, iconic part of the song. Um, this palm muted um, descending E minor pentatonic scale lick. And then finish on that uh, E note there. So now you know what's happening, go away and have some fun with it. And as always, you'll find a full tab for that solo in both Guitar Pro and PDF formats along with a clip of me playing it. Uh, that explanation you've just seen there and a jam track to play along with, all of that is up on my Patreon page. There's the address and the link is in the description. $3 or £2.50 a month gets you access to all of these additional resources that go along with these YouTube videos. A massive heartfelt thank you to everyone who supports me in that or any of the other ways all of which are also linked down below so how did this solo teach me how to learn the fretboard well regular viewers of this channel will no doubt know that th this anecdote because i've told it many times but my first electric guitar a woolworth's top 20 absolute dog of a guitar i describe it as a collection of sharp edges held together by a guitar shaped lump of plywood um Basically, it used to break strings, like, you know, kind of at the drop of a hat, really. So if I was wanting to play something like that, or even like the intro lick to the song, that kind of thing, then if I didn't have this string, I had to find those notes elsewhere. And, you know, back in the olden days when I was learning, late 70s, you know, you had to... Um, tune the guitar by ear you know using the kind of fifth fret fifth fret fifth fret fourth fret fifth fret method so if this string here was missing then you because you knew that uh, the fifth fret on this string gave you the same note then um you you knew that any notes that you needed on this missing string could also be found on this string but five frets higher and you could apply that across you know all of the other strings as well so if i needed to play that but i didn't have this string i knew i could go or maybe even like that and if this string was missing and i couldn't play then maybe i could do it there or there like that and that was essentially the, the beginnings of me teaching myself what I didn't realize at the time but what turned out to be all of the pentatonic box shapes and um, learning where notes were so it's an exercise I often give to my students you know pretend you've broken a string and um, then find another way of playing this lick or that lick or this riff or that riff and it really does kind of get you exploring the neck and uh, teach you where things are so just a little tip for you there it worked for me but anyway folks that's the video for today hope you've enjoyed what you've seen found it useful and informative in some small way and if that's the case please hit the subscribe button and the notification bell if you haven't already done so and why not give me a like while you're at it don't forget as always the live stream every Friday 5pm UK time where we drink beer and talk music and guitars what i ask you is not to like about that it's a fantastic way to kick off the weekend i'd love to see you there if you can make it but for now i'll bid you all a good day and say thank you so much for watching thank you for your time look after yourselves folks stay well stay safe and above all stay sane bye for now